Check one, check, check. Okay, welcome back to episode two of Let's Talk About That with Seckert and... G. Linda. And in today's show, we're going to be talking about a variety of very commonly misused words, if you will. Um, this is going to be shutdown words, but before we get into that part of the segment, let's talk a little bit about some of the most common words from the 70s, <laughs> you know, back Mm-hmm. Back when you were born, mm. no, not you were quite. born. You were born. Yeah, I, yeah, I was. Yeah. I was around for a little bit already. Uh, yeah. Seventy uh, words from the seventies, the eighties, nineties, and the millennial. And yeah, the, the language we can't understand. <laughs> language, yeah, <laughs> totally can't understand that at all. Um, some of the the uh, I wasn't. I was just a, a young lad, if you will, um, back in the seventies. But I remember it quite fondly. Um, and I'm sure you probably remember some of the words too. A pity. Pardon? A pity. Just a little bit. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm bilingual. That's perfect. Um, yeah, so like from the seventies, if you guys remember, uh, you know, if you're if you're twelve or thirteen watching this, you probably won't remember it. But if you're over twenty, you might. Over forty. Over forty. Well, yeah, yeah, we'll over give it 40. that. Before, over forty. Uh Jeepers Creepers. Who can remember that one? Do you Where'd rem- you get those peepers? Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, like mm-hmm. that. I don't know if mom and dad were saying those things or if it was the teenage. I wasn't a teenager yet. Yeah, I'm, no, I don't think I was a teenager yet. And I was running. But I had some cousins that were teenagers and I can remember stuff like Jeepers Creepers. And, but and- whenever you came up with a cool word and your parents started to use it, you stopped using it, right? Because it wasn't cool when your parents picked it up. No, because they were... They were old. They were gay. We used to they, say they were gay. They were gay, yeah. And, and gay not as in, you know, a sexual preference, but, yeah. but in just, the 60s, just not cool. Like, not cool. You didn't call your parents gay in the 50s. In the 50s? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. What the fuck? How old do you think I am? <laughs> do, we have to, do we have to go through this again? <laughs> we might Well, seriously. But yeah, it, it, was, it was just a very uncool thing when your parents mm-hmm. tried to be hip. Mm-hmm. Right, mm-hmm. because we experience some of that today. We try mm-hmm. to be hip with our own kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it doesn't. Fly. <laughs> it doesn't fly. It doesn't fly. No. Right, like, and it's no, like, hey, it doesn't. You know, you Google the the in trendy words of today, and and you just try to slide one in in a conversation at dinner, and you get the deer in the headlights look, and they're like, Dad, you're creeping me out. Like, yeah. don't creep me. Mm-hmm. That that I guess mm-hmm. that, that's a thing too, right? The creep. Mm-hmm. Anyways, who remembers the word spaz? Do you remember that one? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So is that like? I think if you follow the ebb and flow of trendy words, like Jeepers Creepers and spaz, they they kind of like spaz turned into nerd, which turned into I don't know what's a like. What do they call kids? To, well, they, they call them smart, right? You know what I mean. <laughs> but but it evolves over time. Yeah. They just Mm-hmm. They, it's it's a different color to the word. Spaz was always an overreaction, right? Was it? Like you just spazzed out about something. Right. Um, it, it was an overreaction. Nerd was somebody that just didn't quite fit, right? right. Like right. we're nerds to our kids, um, but yeah. our, ki- our kids don't use the word nerd. No, because no. a nerd is somebody of intelligence today, right? Right. That's, but back mm-hmm. in the day, remember the pen protectors, the pocket mm-hmm. protectors? Mm-hmm. Like those were nerds, right? Mm-hmm. I worked in IT. Yeah, I mm-hmm. understand pen I, protectors. Yeah. Everybody's seen Back mm-hmm. to the Future, probably, mm-hmm. you know, that mm-hmm. movie, and mm-hmm. they were nerds, right? Yeah. Or, yeah. or Doc was a nerd. Right. Um, Klutz is another one from mm-hmm. the 70s. Clumsy. Yeah. And not, I don't remember all these words. I actually had to Google them last night and, mm-hmm. and just to. But I remembered them once I read them again, right? So I'm just going to go through a few of them here. Um, so you cl- clutch, like I said, flip flip side. That was like I don't know if it was like the see on the flip side on the flip side. Yeah. But it was yeah. the, it was the disco era in the 70s. Mm-hmm. Staying alive, yeah. staying alive, and mm-hmm. the the froze, right? Mm-hmm. The afros and and all mm-hmm. that. The mall bangs. The what? The mall bangs. Don't the, know what the, that is. The teased ass hair. The the mall bangs. Oh yeah, the, like psh, 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 hairspray and your bangs were this high up for sure. Why? And they call it mall like with an M. Mall, mall. Like you're going to the mall. Mall bangs. Why did they call it? What, what's the I didn't significance invent it. of mall? I didn't invent it, but I did have sweet mall bangs. Yeah, like one mm-hmm. of those big ass hair. Like I yeah. I I think of like 
like uh, peacock, uh, like just overdone. Just the front was done. Yeah, and then just lots of hairspray. It was bad. It was bad. Yeah, we don't ever want to go back to that era. No. Okay, no. I think of like Will Smith, you know, in in his show. Uh, what was his show? Nineties. Um, hmm. Beverly Hills, uh, Bel Air, uh, Fresh Prince of Bel Air. You you don't have TV, right? Did you watch TV? No. <laughs> this mm. isn't ringing a bell to you at all. <laughs> Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Yeah, no, I saw because it they sure. had they I had the it. the 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 thing in the front, right? Not the pick, the 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 fro pick, but the right. Mm-hmm. It was there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah I did, I, 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 you're not. I didn't love that show, so yeah, yeah. I watched it a couple of times, but yeah, yeah, no. Okay, no. We've met, right? You, no. you and I. <laughs> just, just a you're couple not, of times. You're not picking any of this stuff up. Yeah, I'm not picking okay. up what you're laying down. Just saying. All right, gnarly. Gnarly. Do you remember gnarly? And then that was gnarl. Yeah. Was yeah, it? It got shortened to gnarl. That's so gnarl. Yeah. Yeah. Just bad. Right. Bad. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And and then groovy. I mean, mm-hmm. everything was groovy. Well, been it was around a, for a while. It was the disco era, yeah. so everything was kind of groovy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, then that takes us into the '80s, and I, I really think the '80s defined a lot of, a lot like a, the '80s was a big time, a big big mm-hmm. musical era. Oh, for sure. Um, yeah. Big. It was just huge, mm-hmm. and, and I I just think of like MTV and mm-hmm. and much music and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But a lot of the uh, you know the boxy shoulder. Oh, the fashion. shoulder pads. Yeah. Oh, right. Oh, yeah. And and. A lot of good movies out of the '80s too, but a lot mm-hmm. of these trendy words, you know, they they came out like "gag me with a spoon." Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> not really sure how that works if you're gagging somebody with a spoon, but I, I you just said want it. them to shut up. Yeah, yeah, I guess right. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you just want them to like it, shut it down. It's gross, or yeah. is it gross, or is it? No, it's just shut up. Just Gag sh- me with a spoon, just shut up. Kind of a shutdown word. Yeah, oh, for sure. In in a mm-hmm. sense. Mm-hmm. Eat my shorts. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Eat my shorts. So that was that was before The Simpsons. I'm sure it was before The Simpsons came out because mm-hmm. The Simpsons came out in the 90s, right? I didn't I watch a lot to, of The Simpsons. Okay, Simpsons. so this is a TV thing again, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah right. Okay. So did you guys listen to the radio? Did you get, <laughs> gather around the you know the big radio in the room and after Sunday dinner and Dad after, smoking his pipe after we milked know? the cows and yeah, yeah no. No, that's what I, I think. Yeah, you know, I used there might to, have been some vaudeville in your time. Do you right? want to know something? What? I I read a lot. I was a reader. I didn't. Okay. I didn't watch a lot of TV. So yeah, I'm I'm going to be honest with you. Okay. There's a bookmobile that used to come just down the block from our from our house, and I used to walk there every Thursday and pick up like a dozen books. The bookmobile. Just describe that to the people that don't. Oh, know so what it was a, a it was a, a trailer that was pulled in by a semi tractor and uh, came to the local corner store and you could go and sign out books and it was the same library card that you had for for other libraries but it was just very convenient so yeah i i read a ton of books tons of books so that was a way like the public library every every town city Mm -hmm. had a public library Mm -hmm. um i shouldn't say everyone but most of them did Mm -hmm. and so they were actually one of the first pioneers to go mobile right i didn't know that well Book mobile, okay, right. Okay. <laughs> so they put their books on wheels and took the <laughs> took the literature to the public. Yes, and right. reading is very important. We know that. Right? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. And you know, I don't think it was that long ago they just continued those. I don't know. Right there, mm-hmm. I know in my neighborhood there used to be one. I think the plug-in's still there for it, like the lamp post and everything. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, Interesting. But, yeah, it is. I mean, mm-hmm. everything's online today, but they might be the first pioneers of going mobile. Mm. Okay. You know Very what I mean? cool. Yeah, it is kind of cool. Very cool. Veg out. Veg out. So veg out from the eighties again. Veg out. I don't know. The uh, smoking grass was uh, grass. I mean, I sound old. <laughs> yeah, right? that, okay, yeah. that sounds old. Smoking dope, smoking weed. Weed, yeah. Mm-hmm. Was was illegal then, and uh, I think it came from that. You're vegging out because a lot of people are smoking dope. I mean, dope goes back. To the sixties, you know, probably or earlier. Yeah, yeah. Do you think dope went back before the sixties, yeah. oh, sure. fifties? Yeah, or that was just straight heroin and cocaine back then. Mm. Yeah, I wouldn't know. TV thing again or no? Mm. Reading, reading, so reading, reading. Mm-hmm. 
but back in I, was, I shouldn't well, back in the Vietnam War, like back in Nam and stuff like that, like people were doing hallucinogenics, LSD. And, did you fight in the Vietnam War? Yeah, I did a okay. little bit. Yeah, <laughs> I did, it was video games maybe. But no, I didn't. Um, uh, wannabe, you want like that was a big one in the eighties too. You're just a wannabe. Mm-hmm. So if you if you were a musician or something. And you're trying to be a rock star. Actually, they still use that term today quite loosely. Uh, you are just a wannabe. You're just a wannabe mm-hmm. guitar player. You know, mm-hmm. you're just or a wannabe biker. Like bike, like mm-hmm. the you know, not gangs, but you mm-hmm. bought a Harley, you know, but you wore dress shoes with your leather outfit. Didn't, didn't. So you were a wannabe, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, just didn't have the whole the whole look going the on. The package, yeah, yeah. And just wasn't yeah. there. And uh, rad was a big one. Totally, radical. Totally rad. Totally radical. Not radical. Just no, but that's rad. shortened for radical. For sure. Yeah. You Where do were, you think rad came from? Yeah, but... It's not radiator from a car. But that's what a mum would say. So if the, if the word was rad, you're, it's rad. You're rad, right? That's because I know how to spell. But if you go, you try to be a mum and be cool, and you go, you misuse it, and you go, that's radical. It's like... Mom, <laughs> you're so not cool. So Gag not me cool. with a spoon right now. Yeah, yeah. and then okay. I took us into the '90s, and it used to be uh, talk to the hand, right? Mm-hmm. Like how many times? I, I, you know, people still actually do that. Like, but now it's get out of my personal space, right? Or you know what? Yeah. Well, when you put the hand up, you're shutting the other person down, right? And yeah. it could be leave that with me. Leave that with it. Stop. Leave that with me. I hear what you're saying. Yeah. I need to process. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's definitely a shutdown in, um, term in, in adult relationships. It could. Yeah. And, and you know, interestingly enough, one of our shutdown words that we have slated for the show today is whatever. Mm-hmm. And that was... So miscommonly used. It's ridiculous. So commonly misused. So that's what I said, isn't no, it? No, so miscommonly used, I think <laughs> okay. is what you said. Okay, well thanks <laughs> so for I the correction. So I think you misused that. Yeah, but, I did, I totally um, did. But, but it's, uh, to my surprise, that, that comes from the 90s, the hmm. what the term whatever. Well, it carried into the 2023 because... For sure. I was talking to a girlfriend on the phone for yesterday. For sure. <laughs> I was, well, I was talking to a girlfriend on the phone yesterday yeah. and, and she actually used whatever. I was telling her a story or whatever and uh, whatever. Um, right. And she, at the end of my story, she says, okay, whatever, and carried on to something else. Right. Clearly, she wasn't interested in listening to the rest of my story and it... Was, it, shut, it shut you down? That's it shut me you down, yeah, it? yeah. I wasn't quite done my story. Okay. But, you know, yeah. we'll get into that. A mm-hmm. little bit. I'm just going to go through a few more okay. on the list here, but For we sure. will get into that a little okay. deeper, into that word. Um, sup. What's up? What's up? That that came from the 90s as well, right? What's up? And it's just sup, S-U-P. Mm-hmm. Um, another one was uh, fly, your fly, and your dope. You're dope. Yeah. You're cool. You're cool, yeah. That shirt's dope. Well, maybe not this one, but... That's not a bad shirt. But yeah, dope, right? Mm-hmm. It's it means very cool. Uh, booyah, and I know I when I was researching this last night, and I said, I totally remember booyah, and you're looking at me like a deer in the headlights, and mm-hmm. and that comes from like an Al Pacino movie, right? I, I can't remember the name of the movie. I mm-hmm. should probably reference that here, but he he kind of booyah, right? So that that meant if you were into something, uh, from my recollection anyway, if you were um, Hey, do you want to do you want to go get drinks after work? Booyah! Right, that's that's your acceptance. Like a, that, absolutely, you're just Let's owning go. it. Yeah, mm, it's okay. for sure. Okay, okay. <laughs> uh, we're probably gonna, like the for sure thing. That that's another. I'm not sure what era that came out. Uh, that that sounds to me like 90s or maybe. That's 80s. something that I misuse a lot. I'm always saying for sure. I, I you know what I use it a lot today too. Hmm. Um, I don't think we use it a, a whole bunch in our show, but I could be wrong. Mm, I do. Uh, you think we do? Yeah. Like 28 times or something. Okay. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> but, right. it, but there's another word, right? But that's so, not a shutdown word. No, for that's sure. That's agreement. Yeah. Like, yeah, for come sure. On, yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah, Bring yeah, it on. Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah, it totally is, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Do, you, do you want another drink? For sure, right? Mm-hmm. You just, mm-hmm. You're just really overzealous about the answer. Mm-hmm. It's, it's a good, yeah, it's a good, it's a for sure answer. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. There's no other way to interpret mm-hmm. that. Uh, the year 2000, millennial. Remember when uh, K- 
computers were around, absolutely. And remember when the clock was going to click over into two th- the year 2000? Oh, and everyone was Every- losing their mind. <laughs> losing their I'm shit. I'm going to lose all my backup. I'm, my data is going to disappear. How am I going to run payroll? Yeah. Uh, yeah, and nothing that was, happened. That was ter- and yeah, it was like nothing a non-event. Happened. Yeah, non-event. And then you became uh, a newbie. Remember, mm-hmm. right? Remember the newbies, right? Mm-hmm. So when the chat lines first started to happen, mm-hmm. kind of that was the first introduction into social networking, social media, were chat lines, chat rooms, right? Mm-hmm. And you were a newbie. So, and you know that's still that's still used, but it's a noob now. It's isn't a noob, it? yeah. yeah. Everything's getting shortened. It's a little or, shortened, yeah. And then peeps is another peeps. one that came. Still so use your peeps. peeps, your circle, uh, which is very much used today. Rants or not rants, rents. Rents. This one blew my face off. Yes, last night. Rents is a a, a trendy term for for those who don't know for parents shortened. Yeah, so your your rents to me you're like you're like you're a, you're a rat or something like that's what that makes me think of. It's like well, and it probably oh, what, be, what do your rents think of that? But we rents. but we get so lazy and we want to shorten our text because you can't send somebody you know a whole string, so everything's abbreviated, yeah. right? O I C, uh, rents, um, yeah, like noob. It's every everything shortened. I can't I can't read the text today, and that makes me old. You know what? That that makes me mm-hmm. a renta. <laughs> I'm a renta, like a grandpa. I'm a renta. Yeah, like it, it's, yeah. yeah, it's just mm-hmm. like... Uh, so uncool. Very uncool. Mm-hmm. And BFF came out of uh, mm-hmm. the millennial too, or the, the, the 2000s. And then BFGF, yep. And then... BFF forever. And then MILF and GILF and... <laughs> right? All that stuff. I mean, and that actually didn't come up in my search, but I, I've been using that for a while. The whole MILF thing, right? No. Really? Yeah. No, I I didn't know that. Okay. Okay. Are you misusing it? No, absolutely not. Are you not. actually no. using it? <laughs> I guess that would no. be the question. You know what? I'm not. I'm abusing it is what I'm doing. <laughs> That's okay. what I'm doing. Okay. Uh, which brings us in 2010. Uh, and then the chillax came. That was a big one for the, mm-hmm. for the, uh, the generation 10, right? Just chillax. You're chillaxing. Mm-hmm. Um, and Bay is one that I didn't understand last night. I'm Bay. I had to actually read what it meant. Bay, B A E, is short for babe or baby. Hey, babe. Hey, baby. And it's Bay. So all they've dropped is one letter. Yeah. Because they're it, too lazy to type that it, extra B. It took a lot of effort. To, 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 you try it. Just go, B. That, that takes a lot of effort, right? Like it wow. does. And put two of those in the same word. That, that's crazy. You're asking a lot. You know what person. terrifies me about this next generation is I think they are bad spellers. I think spelling is going by the wayside, which tears me up because you know I love to spell and I love to read. Um, right. And books are things you past you. You don't do TV very often. I, I don't love TV. I have enough addictions. Yeah, I but don't it, it, it's too. very hard to... Uh, yeah, it, it's painful sometimes to read texts from kids, and that just makes me old. So, mm-hmm. if that's the way the future, I don't know. Like, I I need to start doing audio books then or something because I I don't get. But they talk in these. It's like talking in tongues. <laughs> it's a different language altogether, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's crazy. Mm-hmm. Uh, another one is uh, lit, right? If something is lit, like oh, that's lit. Um, that means that's cool. Super, super cool. Super cool, yeah. Totally lit. And it's lit, right? Mm-hmm. And it's interesting because the word lit evolved from 2010 era, decade, into today's day, and now they call lit fire. It's oh, fire. it's a step up. It's a step up. It's not just like yeah. these lights behind me. It's yeah. totally on fire. right. So I think maybe I'm I'm guessing in 2020 maybe we can start a trend here in 2030 so we'll go from lit in 10 fire in 20 and in 30 maybe it'll be like inferno or something right that's inferno hmm. and you're going to be the trendsetter that no, starts probably that? Not. Yeah. no okay. probably not no okay. probably not yeah right. uh, and fleek fleek uh, f l e e k 
uh, it was another one that uh, in 2010, which I'm not even really sure what that one means, fleek. I know I looked it up last night, but I can't remember. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> it doesn't matter, right? <laughs> and then 2020, real quick. Um, <coughs> so now we got slaps. So if I think if something is dope or lit or cool, it slaps. And maybe I'm wrong in saying it. I, I might be using it in the wrong context, but it doesn't matter. It's our show, mm-hmm. right? You said whatever you want. I know. That mm-hmm. slaps, right? No, wrong. Probably wrong. No. Yeah. No. Okay. No. Carry on. What's the next word? Facts. F-A-C-T-S. Facts. Like you're you're very factual about something. So if I if I quote something online, because you know all that shit's true, right? But if I quote something online and I got numbers to back it up and very resourceful, and you might look at me and go, facts. Yeah, that's that's lit. Like, good job, right? Okay. Like, I'm I not might gonna, say good job. I'm instead. not going to challenge that, mm. right? Uh, I talked about fire. Stan, <laughs> that was an interesting one. So Stan, uh, for those who don't know, including myself, if you have, if you're famous uh, and you have fans of your notoriety, right? You're famous. So you have fans and then you have stalkers. Well, the kids today are too lazy to break both those words out. So they call them stands. They're stalking fans. Stands. I feel like it's an episode of Sesame Street, you know, when they scooch the words <laughs> over. <laughs> One right? of these words yeah. just doesn't belong here. And you you can uh, speak to this one, T, right? Oh, T. Yeah. Okay, for sure. My, um, my daughter always says to me, depending on who I'm going for lunch with, make sure you get the piping hot tea. And I have some peeps in my world that love to share gossip. So it's not about drinking piping oh, hot tea. Oh, heavens no. It's about spilling the tea, spilling the gossip. Right. Sharing secrets that they should not share with others. Um, so my daughter will say, so how was lunch with XYZ? Um, did you get some piping hot tea? It's all a gossip. Yeah. Yeah. And is it is it like a blanket thing? Like, like it's just... No, it's more like, you are not going to believe this, but... Um, and then they just, I'm going to give you some tea. They, no, they, they would never say they're sharing tea and cause they don't believe they're gossips, but they are clearly gossips. Okay. And so they just like to talk about other people. Okay. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's not interesting actually. Cause a lot of times people like to talk about others to pump them own, their own selves up. Their own and selves. And it's not yeah. okay. It's not okay. When somebody says to you, Sacred, if I said to you, you know, I, I need to talk to you about something yeah. and this is between you and I. I'm trusting that you're not going to share it with anyone. Except my besties. But some people live for that. Um, When you share confidential information. Is that a pinky swear thing or is that a... I don't even have to pinky swear. If I just say this is between you and I, I know you have the respect that it's going to be between you and I. And you're not going to share it with other people. But where did you hear it from? No, I, I'm, I'm talking if there's something personal oh, going some on Some personal in my life. for yourself. Right. Okay. So, so yeah. yeah. Um, I have peeps in my life that right. like to get off the phone with one person and hop on the phone with another person because yeah. they need to be the first person to th- share the story, right? And they go, you're not going to believe this. I, I just... Can I just yeah. interrupt for a second? Mm-hmm. Have you ever... You, you've been on that side, right? You've of done that. Of what? Been that person? You've never no. been that person? No. Actually, I have a girlfriend that says to me that I'm one of the few people that she knows that keeps things in the vault. And I don't share stories that aren't mine to tell. That's kind of my motto in life. If it's not my story to tell and it doesn't mm. affect me, I mm. don't share it with others. Mm. Mm-hmm. I, I, can't, I can't honestly... I can't, I can't say I'm that person because I've done that. I'm for sure I've done that. I've... Uh, yeah, I've been okay. We're gonna have to talk after the show then, because I've shared some stuff with you, and no, I just I need to know so, because it's it's it's, <laughs> it's yeah. about evolution, right? Uh, you evolve. You okay? You sh- if somebody confides in you and shares something that's personal, personal, or somebody else else's personal story, 
because that's why I said to you, well, who did you hear it from? Because somebody obviously told you, and then you're telling somebody, and they tell somebody, and they tell somebody, and that's how the truth gets out, right? <laughs> right, like the old telephone game. Yeah, but I've, sure. been, I've played that game. for. I, of course I have. I've played that game. Okay, you know what? We're going to have to talk after the no, show. I don't think so. Yeah, I think no. we will. Yeah, don't I shut s- me down. I swore to all those people I would never share. <laughs> don't shut me down. <laughs> but we evolve, and you, and you learn from your... It's harmful, okay? So it is harmful. When somebody it's har- tells you a deep, dark ser- secret about somebody else, chances are very high chance, very highly probable that it's a bunch of bullshit. But not even right? telling secrets about somebody else. It's, it makes it's, you look bad. It's sharing personal feelings yeah, yeah, yeah. that I don't want anyone else to know but you. And if right. you're telling your guys, yeah. that's violating... Um, our trust. It's yeah. it's violating respect for me, mm-hmm. and that's not cool. That's right. so not cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, I I agree. It, it's yeah. It's, it's not lit. No. 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 no it's, it's not. It's bad. Would you agree? Um, getting off the the secret thing, but uh, shot down words like that's that's the segment today. Um, mm-hmm. That a lot of these words are they can they can actually define a person's mood. Right, because they're descriptive words. I shouldn't say quite descriptive, but uh, it it will define. You'll see when we get into it here, and I, I know you know what this is about. But um, it can define a person's mood. And if I use the word properly or improperly, I can define your mood for the rest of your day depending on the placement of shutdown words. Like poking the stick at the bear. Poking the stick, Okay, yeah. po- okay. Poking the bear. Mm-hmm. And uh, it can be derailing for mm-hmm. your day. Mm-hmm. So let's just, t- you know what, let's just talk about the words. Um, okay. The first, the first word, the big one is whatever, right? Again, that comes from the 80s, mm-hmm. and or maybe it was the 90s, I can't remember now, Uh but the word whatever can be used misused or misheard it it's it depends on your vocal inflection of the word right so if 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 i say to you you're telling me a story you're you're telling me hey i i went and bought a pair of shoes today and this cutest dress was on sale and i bought that and uh, two and i go whatever what am i telling you Oh, that you're totally not interested in my purchases. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm. yeah. And if and it, so, I'm shutting you down. Absolutely, and you're making me feel bad for it. And I haven't even told you about the person wallet that matched <laughs> to it. <laughs> right? I just I just started with yeah. the, the light stuff for yeah. sure. And then uh-huh. and then on the other on the flip side, the term like if you say, hey, um, you know, I'm going to make ham and scalloped potatoes tonight for mm-hmm. dinner and. Uh, what do you think of that? And I go, yeah, whatever, right? Mm-hmm. I do that. And that's positive. That's you, a positive. Because yeah. you like that. I know you like that. And mm. whether we have meatloaf or ham or chicken, you're okay. You're indifferent. Because right. I'm making supper. And when I'm making supper, you can't make me feel bad for what I'm making. Right? No, no. you can't. Because no. if I if I had my heart set on something else and I didn't You would have made it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Totally. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. Totally. There's a word that's from That's so rad. That's, I think that's from the 90s. But. Yeah, yeah. Um, another one is forget about it. You know what? That one makes me wild. When somebody says, just forget about it. And that's usually the tone. Just forget about it. Um, right. I can't forget about it. I can't. You can't. Absolutely. I, 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 I obsess with it. And I go, why am I supposed to forget about this? This is something I clearly can't forget about. Why did you tell me this story and want my input right. to help you solve the problem or whatever it is? And now I'm just supposed to forget about it. Yeah, I th- I think a lot of the times, um, it's a knee jerk. Most of these words are knee jerk reactions. Mm-hmm. And if 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 you know we're setting up the studio and you ask me a question about why does this plug into that and yada yada yada, mm-hmm. and I and I start to explain it to you and I go, you know what, just forget about it. Mm-hmm. And and. I'm shutting you down. Yeah, but I'm okay with that because, you know, honestly, I'm, <laughs> but, I'm just trying to be polite and, and trying to help. And I don't know where everything plugs into yeah, stuff here. But and, right now, in the moment, you might say you're okay with that. But some 
times you might not be and you go, you know what, fucker? How about you just teach me a little bit here? I, I call you out on it. Yeah, because it, it makes you feel... Stupid. That can make you feel stupid. For sure it is. And less valuable. Mm-hmm. Right? Where I'm just saying, I could be saying, you know what, just forget about it because we're on a time crunch here. Mm-hmm. And if I need to stop to explain it, it's not about you can't learn it, but there's it's pretty in-depth. You know what, right? though? Think about this, What's though. That? I'm emotionally mature enough to understand that you're not going to um, try to make me feel stupid on purpose, right? Right. Um but it depends what my mood is. If I've already had my my ass kicked around the block with everything else I've done in the day, that might be the tipping point that goes, he thinks I'm stupid. Yeah. But on a good day, I'm yeah, going to yeah, go, yeah. okay, you know, I'm overreacting, I'm oversensitive to this, and get over it, right? Yeah. I think get over so. it's yeah, a good I, one, too. It is. And and uh, it it is. It doesn't concern you, mm-hmm. right? That's a big one. That's a corporate one that really mm-hmm. sticks up my ass. It yeah. always has. Yeah. You know, um, you go to your boss with something, just a quick scenario. You go to your boss with an issue or something, mm-hmm. you know, so-and-so did this and because there's always somebody else involved, clearly. But mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you go, you know what? That doesn't concern you. It's mm-hmm. like, for real? But I know this. You just said that it doesn't concern me? But when you know something and you can't yeah. unknow it, it does concern you. And if he's not willing to do anything about it... Um... I think that's very pompous. Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think it's very... None of your business. Like, psh, I'm me. Like, that. I, I own the company, and this doesn't concern you. Go back to work or whatever. Like, mm-hmm. oh, there's whatever again. Mm-hmm. But it's just very demeaning. Um, mm-hmm. It's just, yeah, total shutdown word. Mm-hmm. Um, I got this is another big one. I'm really guilty with that one. You are. I am very guilty yeah. about that one. Yeah. Um, it's it's almost like the Jen Saki thing with the, with those all circle back, right? So I that's how I view that, and I'm sorry I just kind of derailed mm-hmm. here for no, a second, okay. but that's okay. But the I got this when you know, carry you carry on because you say you, so you no I do I do here. say that and I probably say it a little bit too much. Um, if I'm if, okay, say if if we're having company over for supper tonight and and I'm making supper and I have the list and you know I'm very organized in the kitchen and and I'm making the supper, yeah. Uh, you poke your head and you go, hey, do you need any help with making the salad? Because that's what I, I do. Uh, that's what you do. And yeah. and I go, no, no, don't worry about it. I got this because mm-hmm. I do. Yeah. Um, and I, you'll be on clean up. Well, you know you'll be on clean up when I cook and vice versa, right? Yeah. Um, but sometimes. Maybe when too much shit is going on, you go, hey, do you need a hand? I go, no, don't worry about it. I got it. I got this. Um, but you, you hold me accountable to that. And <laughs> but you, you go, get elevated. Yeah, I do. I do. Absolutely. I get yeah. elevated. And you'll say, okay, we need to talk. And I'll go, nope, I, I need some time to process. But that brings us into our, because there's two words. There. Yeah, I know. I know. But they, they run together. They run together. They run so together. I got this. And what's the other big one that you do? I just need to process. Leave yes. that with me. Leave that with me. That's yeah. the Jen Saki one. Yeah, yeah, leave that right? with me. And so I will. I'll call you out and I'll say, okay. Sometimes it's it's something that I'm not ready to talk about. Right. Or something that I don't want to talk about with you. But right. you can clearly see that I'm upset by something that's derailed something. in my world. Yeah. Um and sometimes I'm hoping you're gonna forget, but you don't. You, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> You never do. You never do. No, so so you'll no. say, okay, okay, do you need some <laughs> quiet time? Um, and I do. Um, mm-hmm. We'll revisit this in an hour. And you'll call me out on it in an hour. But you won't say, you won't, you won't, you won't put the terms down. That's why I call you out. You'll say, just leave that with me. Then I'll say, okay, I need to process. how long do you need? I'm not sure. Not sure. I need to sleep on it. I need a couple days, whatever it is, right? And then, so then I'll call you, call you out and I'll say, okay, well, let's look at, we'll revisit this tomorrow mm-hmm. when you're ready. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I might not be ready by tomorrow. But you'll make sure that I'm ready and you'll draw it out yeah. of me. Well, you have to, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And the point to all these words, and there, there's many more, many, many more shutdown words we're not even thinking about um, or considering, but if you start... Every day with a shutdown word. Oh, right? you can't. You're, you are setting yourself up for misery. 
And a bad day. And a bad day. And probably a divorce lawyer at some point mm-hmm. in a relationship. Mm-hmm. So we're we're older. We're more we're I wouldn't say we're more mature, but we've lived. We 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 pull from our past and we learn from our mistakes, like most people do. Mm-hmm. Um which is actually why we'd started this channel, really, mm-hmm. to begin with, right? Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, hard, not afraid to talk about the hard things, mm-hmm. in a sense. So we kind of went through a scenario last night of if you get up in the morning and you've got, you know, 2.5 kids and 8 dogs and 10 cats and your world is busy. You got, and, but you got to go to work, I got to go to work. Kids got to go to school, one's got to go to daycare. The big, the big, you know, it's just a big, broad picture of most people's lives, right? We've all lived through. We've that. all lived through yeah. that, and and, yeah. and I'm, I know I'm making it very, very grand scale. I, I just wanted to be clear to the mm. audience that we do not have a child together in daycare. No, 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 no we don't. Okay, no. no, no, and we won't ever. Yeah, no. no. <laughs> no, Why do you look so afraid? Because because they're <laughs> because they're with grandma right now. No, no, no okay. children here. Okay, <laughs> okay. Yeah. just to okay. be clear. Yeah, I just because uh, that wouldn't be very lit. No. <laughs> no. Um, my point is is that when we get up in the morning, we have all these the world, the noise that's around us because we got to go to the job, we got the daycare, you got. You know, that you got to feed the dog. You got to milk the goat. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Who knows what the situation mm-hmm. is? And you have a and stressful get, day at work planned. You've got you've meetings got, or yeah, sales presentations. Got, that's yeah. right. Depending mm-hmm. what you do for a living, you got to always go and pay the man. I always say that's my way of saying paying corporate America or mm-hmm. the corporation. Right? You got to. You're always working. You're you're whoring yourself out to somebody else. Right? Mm-hmm. And that's a whole other segment. But my point is. I leave the work. I leave the house first. The kids are gone. The kids are gone to school. Whatever. I'm leave. I leave the house, and because I got a, I got further to drive to get to my job. You're out the door 15 minutes after I am, and <laughs> you go to put your boots on, and one of them's missing. Right? You can't find it. Because the dog ate it, <laughs> and it's it's in the kitchen, and it's in the living room, and it's in pieces. It's shredded. It does, and you know what? <laughs> you don't have another pair of boots to go with your snazzy outfit for your sales presentation that you're doing that day. So you become unhinged a little bit. Right? <laughs> no, that'd be a lot. And I'm driving down the road. I'm you know I get on the highway and I'm I'm going to my work and I forgot my laptop. So I circle back. I do the gym sacking <laughs> and circle back. And I come back to the ranch and uh, I walk in the door. Oh, I forgot my laptop because I got a sales presentation in 45 minutes. And you come unglued on me, right? Because mm. you are agitated. <laughs> you hate the dog. You actually don't like me very much at the moment, and I walk in and say, "Hey, I forgot my laptop," and you and you just, you know, you just because somehow, up. some way, this is your it's fault. It's my fault, right? Because you came somehow, out. yeah. Mm-hmm. And then and you just get derailed. And now you got, you know, you're wear- so you go to your to work and you're wearing your nice dress with your when well, you got one hooker boot on and one runner on the other. <laughs> you know, like, yeah, okay. you know what I'm saying? Like you're yeah. just. Yeah, you're just. Uh, it's not how the day was planned no, to to it, it, start. It's not. For sure. So, how can we avoid that? And and not that there was a shutdown word in there, but maybe I I ran, came in and said I forgot my laptop, and you look at me and you go, whatever. Like I am just going to come unloaded on you, and and you, you don't even need time to process. Like you're just fire mm-hmm. rapid fire at mm-hmm. me. And it's my fault. Mm-hmm. So what do we do as people? to overcome those situations, right? And that's a pretty extreme... And, you know what? I think it's very common where we take our frustration and anger and, and yeah, we, we take that out on the people that we care the most about. We kind of do. We do. Yeah. Um, 
and that's not fair. That's not right. If we treated our no. friends like we do our family or our, our partners, uh, we wouldn't have any friends, quite honestly, right? We just expect yeah. them to be more resilient and bounce back and have broad shoulders and we could just crap all over them. And that's not cool. And that's no. not okay. And And I think if you start your day... I mean, you can't predict the dog eating your shoe or, you know, a kid puking or whatever. Um, but if you start your day telling that person how much they mean to you. You appreciate and them. You appreciate them. I appreciate everything you do. Yeah. Um, and be emotionally mature enough to pull yourself out of the situation. It's not your fault the dog ate my shoe. Right. Um, maybe my shoe shouldn't have been sitting by the door. Maybe right. somebody should have run the dog first thing in the morning. Yeah. Um, but it's, it goes but it's li- misdirected anger. For That's sure exactly it what it is. And we misdirect our anger and our frustration from our jobs or yeah. um, our personal lives onto our partner. We just expect them to take it. And that's not okay. And we mistreat them. It's in, never okay. Like at, at such a level of, of mistreatment, mm-hmm. because you give the best part of you... To your work to or the to the your person friends. that you're working for. Yeah, yeah. And it's uh, it's unfortunate. It is. It, it goes a little deeper than just telling your partner that you love them, because they know you love them, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, they should. But if you can tell them, you get up in the morning, and you just tell them how much you appreciate them. Mm-hmm. Right, and, and it's and, doing special no, things for them. It too. is because those mm-hmm. are just empty words if you mm-hmm. don't act upon them. Mm-hmm. Like if, like if it was your your night to make supper tonight, and you got held up in the city, and you didn't go, and, and you're running late, and I yeah. know you're running late, I'll make supper for you. Right, like right. I'll, I'll make the supper tonight. Right, um, how can I help? How can I help? Right, yeah. maybe yeah. I'm not going to make what you're going to make, yeah. but there will be something to eat because I don't want to eat supper at That's ten right. o'clock at night. Yeah, it's respect. Yeah, and it's also. It's. I think it's very important to know what your partner has going on during the day. Mm-hmm. Like you don't need a play by play, but mm-hmm. if you got a big meeting that's pretty important to mm-hmm. you, or you've got a doctor's appointment, or you got to pick up, you know, mm-hmm. thing one or thing two and run mm-hmm. them to the dentist or mm-hmm. whatever the case may be, it's it. It's not you know. It's not just about you, and it's not just about me. It's about us, right? Mm-hmm. And when you check in with your partner throughout the day, at least once, mm-hmm. like lunchtime, after lunch, whatever. Hey, how you doing, babe, right? Mm-hmm. Bae, mm-hmm. bae. How you doing, bae? Mm-hmm. Right? Are we having the rents over for supper tonight? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? But yeah. it, but you're mm-hmm. just checking in, just mm-hmm. to check the barometer, put your toe in the pool and say, what's, you know, what what's for dinner? Not, we already kind of know what's for dinner, but mm-hmm. you're just, you're letting them know that you're a little bit special. You're thinking about them. You're thinking about you them. You want their sales presentation to go well yeah. or, or yeah, yeah. whatever yeah. it is they've got going on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's easier said than done because we can get so caught up in the noise that's around us, right? And it's it doesn't take much to take advantage of the situation. And I think as people, we can be very narcissistic too. My day is way more important than your day. Um, and you should just know that I had a bad sales presentation or, um, yeah. Yeah. You know what? Narcissism is going to be a a topic, um, for sure down the road. Yeah. And that's all we're going to discuss because I think we all have the capability of being narcissists. Absolutely. Absolutely. You and I know some people that are narcissistic to the, the core and, we can't change that. No, no, you can't. No, and you know what? That, and that is a whole other yeah. topic. Yeah, um, it absolutely, is. it is. Mm-hmm. That, that that one might actually be a good one to, uh, you know, possibly take on a on a live call, right? Mm-hmm. That because it's so it's deep. That mm-hmm. one, we're really in the weeds on that one. Mm-hmm. But we'll see. Yep. We'll see if we, uh, you know, get into that. Um, but in closing, if if I may, may I? I, don't I want, want to talk <laughs> about next week's segment. Okay. Hang on a second. Okay, before, okay. Before Go. we talk about you next week. Um, in closing, if, if we can just, we're not, we're not therapists, we're not doctors, we're not anybody from any legal entity that, that is a professional in this, in any of these areas, but we're just living our lives, right? And we're living our best lives. You want to put that best foot forward um, and just kind of make sure your partner knows they're appreciated. It takes this much effort to do that, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And it it's actually takes more effort to be a dink than it does to not be one. It, it does. It, it really does, right? It does. And yeah. if you feel good being a jerk, you need to get into the narcissist one when we get oh. into it. <laughs> But nobody yeah. feels good like that. I mean, you elevate your partner. That that's 
That's why you're together. That's why you've got a family and all those things, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What's next week's show? Okay, next week's show is on sincere apologies. And we've all been apologized to by our partners. And we don't feel like it's really validated. They, they might have fucked up something and you don't feel like you got a sincere apology. That's all I'm going to share. Yeah. Because we've got lots to, yeah. to talk about in that segment, for sure. And, and, and it's not cool. Check in next week. But I know we'll talk about this for sure. Because this, this, this point sticks with me hard. It is very uncool, not lit, to say, you know what? I apologize to you. Mm-hmm. Right? Because mm-hmm. that's not a fucking apology, is it? But you, you can't share anymore because we're going to talk no, about it next okay. week. Okay, there, yeah. there's that. Yeah, yeah. I think you just shut me down. I did. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, if you like the show, please subscribe, let, uh, share it out. Um, tune in next week for, as G. Landa says, for the uh, unsincere apologies. Mm-hmm. And uh, I am Seckert and I'm signing off for today. And this is G. Lenda. Make sure to live your best life. Take care. It felt better than it did yesterday or whatever fucking day we tried to.